2006. All right. So with that, I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk, and you'd much rather hear about AWS Honey Tokens. So please give a warm SmoothCon welcome to Dan. <laughs> hey folks, uh, as mentioned, my name's Dan. I'm in the uh, security intelligence team at Atlassian. Um, I'm going to start with a quick demo. I'm going to do what I hope to be the two stupidest things you see on stage today. In fact, over the, the course of the whole weekend, uh, honestly. Now, let's see if I can operate a computer behind my back. Where's the mouse? Okay, so I'm just uh, I'm just going to generate some AWS credentials just uh, just for fun. Uh, location, I'll store these credentials on screen at uh, con. Uh, owner of these credentials, I guess everyone here. Uh, any notes about these credentials? Hi, Heather. That's my wife. She's in Sydney at an ungodly hour watching this on the stream right now. Uh, okay, great. There are some credentials. It's going to be really hard to use those without a mouse. There we go. So I'm just going to check that those work. Did I type that right? Yeah, great. OK, so you can see those are valid AWS creds. They're yours if you want them. Don't worry about writing them down, though, because the second and most dumb thing that I'm about to do is uh, just put them on pastebin. <laughs> OK, so those should be spam. Oh, I've been doing this too much. I am not going to try and do a capture behind my head. Sorry. Um, Sorry, what was that? Oh, right. Yeah, that would have made sense. OK. M-Y-M-N? Yep. That's it? That's the whole thing? All right. Sick. All right. So yeah, that'll show up in Pastebin's recent pastes for the you know, next 15 minutes. If you want a copy of my credentials, you are welcome to them. Uh, OK. So. Probably should start. I'm talking about AWS Honey Tokens and tell you what Honey Tokens means for the purpose of this talk. Uh, I found that on YouTube. Don't don't invest in that. Uh, so Honey Token, for the purpose of this talk, is uh, just a credential that you can use that can't perform any actions uh, and that you monitor closely. Uh, which so you put that somewhere that. In normal operations, people aren't going to come across it. Um, and if anyone uses it, you know you have a problem. Uh, so there are all kinds of different kinds of things you can use as honey tokens, like DNS records no one should ever query, uh, URLs no one should load, email addresses no one should send email to, um, you know, records in databases or whatever. But here we're just using AWS usernames and passwords effectively. Uh, AWS keys. Um, so the thing you saw me generate there was an AWS key. It's got a public-ish part that starts with AKIA and a secret part which is random nonsense. Um, they're extremely valuable for, for you and for people who are attacking your stuff. Um, they get used for all sorts of things. So uh, they're, get, they're user impersonation tokens. Um, you use them to give third-party services access to your infrastructure to like read data or post things or whatever. Uh, automated scripts will use them so they're operating in a particular context, um, et cetera. So they can basically conceivably do anything. Um, and attackers look for them. So my attempt to uh, collect all the schmoo balls. Atlassian has never had a security incident, of course. Um, but <laughs> if we had, I'd be able to tell you that credential reuse is a really big deal these days. Um, people are taking credentials from some breaches, using them to go log into other stuff, and then they're looking for more credentials in that place that they've logged into uh, to then pivot to other things. And like the first thing that they do these days is search for the string AKIA. Uh, you can't search for the secret part of the key, but hackers have figured out that they're usually next to the public part. OK, so AWS keys are like scratchies uh, or instant lottery tickets. Like if you find one, you may as well try and use it. There's no downside. You might win a prize. Great. Uh, this is a picture in case you don't have instant lotteries in this state. Um, most of the time, you, you, know, you find an AWS access key. And what it gives you is uh, access to spin up an EC2 instance forever and mine Bitcoin forever. 
on somebody else's dime. Uh, if you don't get lucky, you might win an information disclosure vector that eventually, if you poke at it enough, you get access to spin up EC2 instances forever in my Bitcoin. Um, those are basically the two things you ever get. Uh, and they're also, AWS keys are everywhere. Uh, because they go into third-party services, because people use them, you generate them in the console and you download them. Um, you'll find them in server environment variables. You'll find them in CSVs, in download folders, third-party integrations. You have Sizo's desktop in a, in a file called AWS root access keys .csv do not delete. This is important. Um, so, but they don't have to be immediate access to spin up EC2 instances. So I should explain. EC2 is what Amazon calls the serv servers that you rent for them. I think it stands for extremely cloud computer. Um, it doesn't really matter. It just means a server. Uh, anyway, you can lock down uh, AWS access key is really hard. So you see this uh, policy here, which is for every action, for every resource, say no. That's a good policy if you want to be secure. It's not great if you want to do anything, but you know. So those three, three things about AWS access keys, um, that they're valuable um, and everywhere and they're easy to secure, make some really good honey tokens. Um, so back to the scratchies metaphor, it lets, it's really easy for you as a defender to rig the game so that everyone's a winner, but the prize is getting caught. Um, I mentioned the Sizos desktop earlier. If you want to just like put a couple of honey tokens on your VIPs machines, that's a really great idea. Um, use Think's free canary service. They are not paying me money to tell you about this. Um, but if you want to spin up a, an access key for every single one of your cloud services, individual microservice components, and you want to divide that up by region so that if you know, like if someone gets a remote code execution on your microservice, uh, you know which instance has been popped, you're probably going to need something a little bit more robust uh, and easier to like automate. So uh, to that end, we made Space Crab. Um, my boss has told me that I need to explain that the, the space is in the crab, the crab is not in space. I have no idea why I need to explain that, but. <laughs> <laughs> he told me like five times. It's obviously very important to him. Hi, Dan. Um, <laughs> so SpaceCrab is a cloud formation stack. Uh, it deploys a data store. It deploys some policies, uh, some lambdas, which are just scripts that Amazon runs for you, um, some alerting gateways, and an API gateway. And the API gateway is just a website that sits in front of the lambda scripts and lets you run things from the web. Um, so what it lets you do is make annotated AWS keys. Um, so you saw me earlier making an annotated AWS key. I put um, where is this token going to be stored and whose problem is it if this token gets used um, and, uh, you know, and just miscellaneous notes. Um, the keys get that deny all policy that I also showed you before. Um, if anyone tries to use those keys, those events get logged into an S3 bucket um, and then our Lambda processes those. If it finds one of those keys, it grabs the metadata that you've stored about it and blobs the whole thing together and like throws it into an alerting pipeline. Um, the alerting pipeline will, can send you an email or call you on PagerDuty or whatever. And they say whatever, it can, it can send you an email and it can call you on PagerDuty. But if you want it to do something else, feel free to make it commit to the project. It's open, you can do whatever you want. Uh, as long as you can get a Lambda to do it, you can have that. Okay, so once you've generated the stack, uh, you can generate up to 10,000 Honey Tokens per AWS account. And that's a limit because AWS will only let you have 5,000 users and each user can only have two keys. Uh, we asked them, can we increase that limit? And they laughed at us and said, no, get another AWS account. So if you need more than 10,000 tokens, you're gonna need more than one AWS account running this. Um, but that should be enough if you're a medium-sized enterprise to cover all of your workstations, um, or you know, if you're a not that big cloud service to cover all of your microservices. Um, and it'll definitely be enough to put a honey token in all of your cloud password managers or third-party logging or JavaScript analytics tools or whatever. So you may have some questions and I will try and head that off now. The first thing, how do I set this up? It's relatively easy. Go to that URL, clone the Git repo, and uh, get yourself a brand new AWS account that doesn't have any of your production infrastructure in it. That part is important. 
Don't put this in prod. Thanks. Uh, and you also need a PagerDuty events API key or an email address or something. Uh, once you've downloaded it, you run the manager.py that's in the repo. You answer some questions and you wait 45 minutes for a um, Amazon data store to spin up. Uh, and with any luck, after that, you'll have a deployed stack. So in terms of deploying tokens, it again, depends on your infrastructure or what you want to do with them. Um, so if you've got a fleet management interface like Casper for your Macs or whatever the Windows equivalent is, like GPO and a bunch of PowerShell, I don't know, uh, you, you can run a script on every machine that gets creds and stores them. This is some bad bash that I wrote uh, that you can run through Casper to do this on a Mac fleet. Uh, you just need to give it an API token and an API gateway address, both of which you get through the AWS console once the stack is up. Um, or you can put them in documents that you email to your CEO. Uh, you can build it into your deployment pipeline and put it into all of those microservices that we mentioned before. Uh, you can transmit them in the clear to third-party analytics services to see who's reading those logs. Um, we could do what Patrick Gray suggests and put them on a post-it note for the next time you have a video interview in your office. <laughs> um, so a lot of people have asked if telling people that we're doing honey tokens makes them useless, but uh, no, it definitely doesn't. Um, if a red teamer or an actual hacker finds some credentials and doesn't use them because they're afraid that you're looking, like that's not the win condition that you signed up for, but it's definitely a win condition. Um, in fact, you don't have to take my word for it. Here's Shub's noted bad guy saying that canary tokens make him afraid. Uh, another important question. So I ran this personally to do some research and it cost me about $33. Uh, that's Australian money, so it's like a buck fifty. Um, <laughs> it, the, the ones we run in the enterprise cost a bit less than $300 a month. Um, it varies a bit, it's not heaps. Okay, so once you've secured the enterprise and you've put honey tokens in your upstream and your downstream and your whole supply chain and all of your insides and your outsides, uh, you'll get bored and you'll wanna know Maybe, what do people do with these credentials if they get leaked on the internet? Uh, so I set up an, a separate account um, with a little EC2 box that runs three cron jobs every hour, uh, every half hour. One generates a token and puts it in a GitHub repo. One generates a token and puts it in a, a gist. And one posts one to pastebin. Um, so what I learned from that, the first thing is that Amazon monitors GitHub really closely for AWS keys. And every time they find one, they'll open a support case for you. Um, they'll do that about, <laughs> they do that about 30 times for, your, for any individual account before they just basically write you off as an idiot. Um, <laughs> legit. <laughs> the second thing that I learned is if you ignore those support cases for a week, someone will call you the day after Christmas and be like, hey Dan, what are you doing with all these credentials? Can you please explain? And you say, it's okay, they're not leaked, I did it on purpose. Um, they'll like say, thanks, uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> and then the third thing I learned is that posting hundreds of AWS tokens to the internet is against their acceptable use policy. Um, <laughs> so that was a little bit sad. Uh, I wanna just point out that everyone I spoke to at Amazon about this was really helpful, really useful. They thought the research was cool and also that I shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> so. In my sadly truncated research, uh, I learned that there are precisely two kinds of people who will use stolen AWS credentials. Uh, the first ones will like grab the credentials and put them in something like the Cloudberry GUI S3 bucket explorer, and they'll try and list buckets and they'll see nothing and they give up. And the second kind will take the keys that it's got and put them in a script of their own devising and try those keys against every single API that AWS offers. Um, until they can find one of those you know, information disclosure vectors that they can use to, you know, et cetera. Um, there are probably people who do other things as well, but those are the only two that I saw in the like three weeks I had this up and running. Okay, statistics. Uh, I messed up my deployment script, so I didn't note down GitHub and Gist separately, sadly, but um, they're exploited in exactly the same way. They're basically the same thing anyway. So 82% of the creds I put on GitHub got, uh, got used and they all got used 30 minutes after they went live, like within a couple of seconds of 30 minutes every time. I have no idea why. That seems weird to me, but that's just what we've got. Um, Pastebin, on the other hand, less than 10% of the keys got used, and that's a better hit rate than some commercial secret storage services that I've used in the past. Um, so consider Pastebin for your storage needs. Um, <laughs> so 
one thing that you'll see if you ever paste something into Pastebin is that they, they get scraped by about 50 or 60 people um, immediately, and then nobody looks at those ever again. Um, if you don't, if someone, if you post an AWS key and no one sees it for about, I don't know, like half an hour, it falls off the front page and you can't find it until Pastebin sends Google a list of all the pastes that they've got recently. So if you miss it in the first half hour, it's gone for generally about half a month. Um, but the way people use stuff that they scraped off Pastebin is different to GitHub. So the time to exploitation was any time between like 12 hours and nearly two days. Um, the guy who did the, the Python script to hit every, a, a, every AWS API call um, grabbed a whole bunch from uh, Pastebin and then used them all at once. So he made like 450 calls over 15 minutes. Um, sorry, I should take this. Pager duty alert. You have one triggered incident on space crab talk. The failure is AWS. Yeah. All right, you don't need to hear the whole name of the key and so on. But uh, it's good. Thanks, Pager Judy. I appreciate you letting me know about that. <laughs> uh, and whoever did that, feel free to own up. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah, so Pastebin's weird. The exploitation pattern is totally different. And people aren't looking at Pastebin very closely. So there's a gap in the market if you're doing threat intel. Okay, so I have to stop now. Uh, the one that disappointed me the most is I posted this on Twitter. I, I said I've been making unhackable infrastructure. Nobody cared enough to look at the picture. Right down the bottom, there's an AWS key accidentally in there. No one tried. That's very sad. Um, <laughs> uh, strong finish. I do not have a strong finish. I do have two calls to action, though. Uh, the first one is use Honey tokens in your infrastructure. It's easy, it's fun, and you'll learn horrible things. Um, and also, please contribute to SpaceCrab if you have an alerting option that you'd like to get in or just make our CloudFormation stack less bad. Uh, that'd be great. Hit us up. Thanks very much. Oh, yep. Uh, no, so he asked where, where have we found Red Team is finding these. Um, I don't super want to talk about that right now, but um, <laughs> we, we recently hired a new Red Teamer and she came on board and she was like, I'm scared to touch any of these things, man. Like, when he, so, you know, the system works. Um, <laughs> most of the things we found have been external, like external services being compromised. Um, it's super useful to narrow down the, like, the source of a leak or something. Yeah, no worries. Thanks.